How's it going gang, it's a final render here. And before we start this video, I just want to give a very big thank you to all the new people who have been coming to join the channel now that we've been kind of doing these Fallout 4 speculation and theory videos. It's been really good fun to go ahead and make some of these videos and it's really nice to know that there are some new people coming in and the Fallout community is starting to get quite excited about a new Fallout game. So, thank you very much. If you are new here, remember to like and subscribe and let's get on with today's theory and speculation video. So this theory video is all going to be about why are the trees so green and luscious inside Fallout 76 and I've seen the comments they've said final render you handsome man stud why on earth are the trees so green 25 years after a nuclear apocalypse surely all of the trees should have been destroyed by radiation poisoning and of course the explosions after the nu initial nuclear blast correct well you very observant viewer and I must say you've got some fantastic taste in video creators we don't really know why all of this has happened but we can go ahead and make some speculations as to why West Virginia in particular actually might have not been as badly affected as some of the other areas in the Fallout universe. And we're going to go into some of those reasons why today. But let's get one thing straight right at the start of this video. This is very much a theory and speculation video. I am not a nuclear physicist, nor do I believe most of the staff of Bethesda Game Studios are nuclear physicists. So there's going to be some made up science in here, along with some, shall we say, exaggerated truths, so to speak. And also, we should never allow actual science to interfere with a good idea for a video game or movie. Otherwise, some of our favorite pieces of art, like Star Wars, Back to the Future, The Matrix, would never happen if we let actual science interfere. So let's just kind of let some of the reality slide, but still kind of speculate how this could happen in West Virginia. So what do we actually know about the nuclear weapons that are used in Fallout 76 on West Virginia? Well, we know that they are on missiles rather than bombs. So this tells us that they're very likely to be hydrogen bombs or thermonuclear bombs, which is very different to, say, the atomic bombs that were used in the Second World War. The atomic bombs are primarily dropped, and also, they actually have a lot more nuclear material in them, whereas the hydrogen bombs use quite a small amount of nuclear material, but then they use that nuclear material to then trigger a different reaction, which actually gives you a much bigger and more powerful explosion. So in other words, it uses a nuclear bomb to detonate a bomb. So therefore, it is a very, very big explosion, but they actually have much less radiation in them, which means that you will have much less nuclear fallout, but a much bigger explosion, which in reality is actually what the military wants. They want a big explosion that destroys targets, not a big bomb that poisons everything. That's no good for everyone. And not only that, but we can also see that the nuclear weapons directly impact with the ground. This is very different to what we would probably do in today's world, for example. Typically speaking, with the thermonuclear weapons, the hydrogen bombs, you would go ahead and detonate them very high up in the atmosphere, in the air, which would then cause an enormous shockwave and an enormous EMP, which would destroy everything that was electric. Everything that used electronics, all of its circuits would be fried by the electromagnetism, nothing would work, and also it means that since it's been detonated high in the air, it means the fallout, if you want to spread it, will actually spread much further. It will be thinner in terms of how deadly it is, but it will spread over a much bigger area. But since these directly impact with the ground, it means most of the radioactive material is very near the ground. So therefore, it kind of gives us a different intention about what was going on. They wanted to poison the area rather than, say, just destroy key military targets. And there is another factor about these missiles, which we will probably never get a concrete answer for, but it's probably the biggest thing we need to know about these missiles to determine how deadly they actually are. One, we don't actually know how big these explosions are. We don't know how much actual nuclear material is on board these weapons. Also, we don't actually know what nuclear material is used on board these weapons. Different materials have different half-lives, so therefore they will last for different amounts of time. There are some elements which have half-lives, nuclear half-lives of minutes, hours, sometimes days, years, and they can still trigger a nuclear reaction. The nuclear isotope that was used in the Fat Man bomb that was dropped in World War II, Uranium-235, has a half-life of 703.8 million years. So therefore, a lot of this really comes down to what's actually in the missiles, but as I said, there are some nuclear missiles where the half-life of the radioactive materials is just a few years. So therefore, depending on what's actually aboard the missile, that could very much determine how long the nuclear fallout will remain in West Virginia. Another factor to take into account is how deadly is this radiation? 
will life actually be able to be sustained in this area? And if not, how long will it be until life can go ahead and be sustained in that area? Well, there is a very simple rule which is typically used in science to go ahead and work out how long radioactivity is dangerous to humans and other life forms. It is called the 7 out of 10 rule and it basically states that after 7 hours the initial radioactivity level after the blast would have dropped by 90% to one tenth of its original level. So therefore after 49 hours the levels will drop again by another 90%. And then after two weeks, it drops by a further 90%. And by 14 weeks have gone, the radiation will be one ten thousandth of the level that was measured one hour after detonation. I'll go ahead and link some of these articles that I'm reading off because this is definitely not my work. So therefore, it is pretty safe to assume that if it is a very weak explosion, it could be simply a matter of years in order for life to go ahead and be mostly sustainably grown. It will very much depend on what species of trees there are and it will also determine maybe the quality of the soil, how much water is there etc. But of course in reality even though this rule does exist it's still a very long time. For example 90% of the world's most deadly nuclear bomb will still be several hundred thousand years of a deadly radioactivity. So in reality it's a little bit different but let's for argument's sake say that it is a very weak nuclear bomb. It is also stated in the Fallout lore that different sized bombs were used on different targets. We know that say in Fallout 3 some of the biggest baddest bombs were used on Washington DC because it is the capital whereas places like Fallout 4, Boston and also West Virginia in 76 may have had smaller bombs used on them because they wanted to save the bigger bombs for the more high value targets. So therefore it's not too ridiculous to assume that different parts of the country would have different levels of radiation and would also get back to a more stable lifestyle quicker than others. So now that we've talked about the weapons themselves and we've just kind of assumed they would have to be small nuclear weapons in order for this to kind of work, we can now take a look at the locations as to where the bombs were actually dropped and also take a look at the map to kind of determine how the radiation would travel across West Virginia in order to preserve some of the trees and foliage throughout the map. Now we need to kind of look at the map and determine where exactly these missiles impacted against the ground. And I'm going to be using the Fallout 76 map to kind of identify where I suspect these missiles impacted against the ground. This map was made by the user Ocelot and other people on the internet and they've been very painstakingly creating this very highly detailed and accurate map of Fallout 76. As new screenshots have come out they've updated the resolution, as new videos and lore have come out they've updated the locations. Amazing bit of effort this is, I really really think you guys should be proud of this and I definitely recommend you go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's very interesting to look at some of the locations. But just by looking at the kind of decoloration of the map and the name of some of the locations, I suspect that the nuclear weapons detonated at the Ash Heap, the Cranberry Bog and also the Maya. Again, I think that just by looking at the kind of decoloration of the map and kind of assuming since there's not going to be much life and there's clearly lots of ash there, then that's most likely where the nuclear weapons detonated. But not only that, we can also get a look at the angle of the shot where we see the dude in the power armor in the trailer and it actually kind of matches up. If you look at the map and then look at the trajectory of the missiles, it kind of actually makes sense. Not only that, but we can also kind of assume by looking at this footage that this guy in the power armor is probably standing in this part of the map, probably very near Fallout 76, which again would also make sense. You might want someone in power armor from the army ensuring the people who need to get into the vault getting quickly. So I think that these locations are actually quite plausible as to where the bombs landed. And again, if you look at the map, you can see that the areas where the missiles landed, not much color, not much life, not much trees. But if you look at the areas that weren't in the direct impact zone, they are green on the map. So therefore, we can also kind of assume that a lot of the radiation didn't land on this area. So therefore, a lot of the trees and other life was actually sustained. And an extra thing, which I haven't actually seen anyone mention yet, is that there is a huge mountain range going across the entire map. Something which is very important to how radiation spreads is the landscape itself. And what do we know about the Fallout 76 location? It is covered in hills. A lot of these hills will block radiation as it falls, as wind comes in to bring the radiation across the map. Obviously, the radioactive dust will be moved by the wind. 
it will actually be blocked by a lot of these mountain ranges and therefore a lot of the radiation might not actually reach certain parts of the map and will, it might even be blown off the map entirely and blown into a different state. We can't be 100% certain. Also, what if it rained not long after the bombs dropped? A lot of the radiation isn't going to travel much further if it starts raining. The rain will actually bring the radiation down and kind of stop it in its tracks, preserving this huge part of the map, which means it won't be affected by radiation as much as the rest of the map, meaning a lot of the tree life can be sustained. And as a further extra point, obviously some of the deadly radiation like gamma radiation and beta radiation this obviously has a limit to how much it can penetrate through and if you have really dense woodland very dense woodland it would actually really struggle to penetrate that woodland because there's just so much physical material for it to get through obviously gamma radiation it has the most penetration ability of the nuclear weapons used and that can pretty much only be stopped by a very dense material such as lead or depleted uranium but if you put enough stuff in front of it, enough trees in front of it, enough dirt in front of it, eventually that radiation will be stopped. And since the radiation has got to go through all this woodland, I suspect that a lot of the woodland towards the back of the wood would be preserved. It makes sense, right? You need to push through more material, less of the radiation is going to get through. And I think that is a really important part. When you look at this map and look at where the bombs are likely to fall, that would very much explain why there is this huge pocket of purely preserved trees. And I think it makes a lot of sense in science. Now that we've talked about some of the real and some of the made up, very highly exaggerated science, there is an extra factor at play when it comes to talking about Fallout. And that is of course, Vault 76 had a Gek inside the vault, a Garden of Eden creation kit. A Garden of Eden creation kit was basically a briefcase which had plenty of materials in there to go ahead and convert soil into fertile soil after a nuclear apocalypse, including lots of different samples of seeds and even some kind of very highly powerful generator to go ahead and power some of the equipment inside the case to go ahead and slowly almost terraform the environment to make it safe for farm life again. And also, in the Fallout lore, it is stated that Vault 76 was meant to open 20 years after the bombs dropped. However, we know by looking at the Pip-Boy at the very start of the game that the main game kind of starts 25 years after the bombs dropped. So what's happened in that five years? Maybe some people left 20 years after the bombs dropped and started to use the Garden of Eden creation kit on the area immediately around Vault 76. That explains why most of the area around 76 is starting to become green, but there are still a lot of areas on the other side of the mountain range that are not yet affected by the Garden of Eden creation kit and thus don't have that much green life. So there is some very much speculative theory as to why there may be so much green life around Vault 76. There is a lot of ifs and buts in this, there is also a lot of made up science in the world of Fallout, but the main kind of summary factors are, one, we don't know too much about the actual weapons used themselves, we don't know how deadly the radiation is or how big the explosions are. We don't know what the weather was like not long after the nuclear bombs dropped. If it started to rain or the wind was very much blowing in the opposite direction, a lot of the worst radiation might be stopped by the rain or pushed out of state simply by the wind. It is just simply dust after all. It can be affected by the wind. Another factor of play is of course the landscape itself of Virginia. It is covered in hills and covered in dense woodland. This is very hard for dust to travel through. The, the mountains themselves will go ahead and create giant volleys of wind which can help push the radiation in certain directions, maybe away from Vault 76 if circumstances were correct. And also, the thick woodland itself would very much prevent a lot of the gamma radiation and deadly poison from leaking through the entire woodlands to get so far. An extra factor of course as well is the Garden of Eden creation kit which may have been put to work to go ahead and start to plant some of the life back again. So, thank you very much for watching this video. As I said, there's very much a lot of made-up science in this, but then again, Fallout has a lot of made-up science. Radiation doesn't cause ghouls or monsters, for example. It just kills you. So, I hope you go ahead and take this video with a grain of salt, and I hope you liked it. I've done lots of research on nuclear weapons for this video, so I'm probably on several MI5 and MI6 watch lists now. But thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and a thumbs up, and remember to check out all the cool Patreon people in the description below who help support the channel with their financial donations. And again, thank you very much for watching. This has been The Final Render, and you've been the audience. Until next time, farewell.